Odd summon, we're gonna special summon a monster from the deck. I would think that that's the Ash, right? Summon from the deck, that's always nuts, usually. Now the Line Walker searching for an Earthbound Prison, which will then be activating to allow an additional summon of an Earthbound. We're then gonna use the Earthbound Fusion to fuse into the Servant Geo. The Servant Geo is gonna be able to add an Earthbound monster from the deck to your hand, which will be the Earthbound Prisoner Stone Sweeper, which could search our deck and then allow our additional summon. We're gonna be reborning our Line Walker with the effect of the Earthbound Fusion, banishing it from the graveyard. And then we're synchroing into a Geo Griffin. Geo Griffin is going to special summon an Earthbound from the graveyard back onto the field as we then make a Shen Shen. Anything sent from the field to the grave is now banished. Interesting. So field to grave banished. So the Poplar stuff, the effects of the Ash. The Ash states that you have to send the card you control to the graveyard. And you can't do that with Shen Shen. So Shen Shen stops the Ash from summoning from the deck. The Poplar, if sent from the field to the grave, will get banished instead, so it's not gonna be equipping. What else does this do? Does this do anything else? Quick effect, special summon an Earthbound from your graveyard in defense. Okay, if this card is destroyed, destroy one card on the field. Has to be destroyed by an opponent's cards. You can't pop it yourself. And I guess that's pretty much our only real disruption that we have is the Shen Shen. Huh, is that enough? We're gonna chain special summon in Earthbound. Does that turn into disruption? I don't think so. Earthbound Prisoner. It states that your monsters cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects if, this, if there's a card in the field zone. Okay, Earthbound monsters are protected from destruction. Ash negate the effect of summoning an Earthbound from the deck. Remember, anything sent from the field to the grave will be banished instead. The ogre is gonna pop the ash on summon. It does not negate the effect. It went from the field to banishment, just like that. Poplar is going to be activated to come forth and summon. Now, the original sinful is an illegal activation. So we have double original sinful we keep on popping, right? No, you have to send the card you control to the graveyard, which is impossible with the Shen Shen. Shen Shen beats Snake Eyes, as you see. It, now, we can still summon Diablo Star. We just can't activate the original Sinful. Discard, come forth. Now, we could use the other effect of original Sinful, which is to search our deck for a level one fire. Diablo Star setting up into the back row. A wanted to be used next turn. To battle, we go. It can't be destroyed due to its effect. Just to double make sure, we gave it a, sec a second attack there. Okay. Now, uh, look at this, we have nothing. Besides, if they summon, we'll summon a Flame Burge, which won't even trigger because it will be banished. We have no disruption, nothing. Baron de Floor, we just got rid of our Shen Shen. Wanted Seeker, searching. Subversion would have won that. I don't know what Subversion is, I'll have to double check. Oh, the Subversion spell to push the Shen Shen into the back row, you're right. That could have definitely won this game. I think Subversion's being played in about half of Snake Eye decks. We've got the Harmonic Synchro Fusion using the Baron de Floor to pop the field spell before the Snake Eye Flame Burge gets summoned from the back row here. We got Punk Seaman searching our deck for a Punk as we then use the Deer Note to special summon the Ogre onto the field as we then Synchro Shokan into an Amazing Dragon. Amazing Dragon on summon could spin cards on the field back into the hand as the semen baboos up the amazing dragon, further giving it more attack into lethal damage. Now the card that they were talking about that would have protected Snake Eyes from this situation is the Subversion. If we go on over to Mastodal Meta from the TCG and let's see how many people are even playing that card. Subversion, 54% are playing the card that was searchable to push the Shen Shen into the back row to stop them from flagating you. And this is why you'd want to consider a card like this. Even something like a Rise Heart. Push the Arise Heart back into the back row if you're losing to even uh, people are now, I'm seeing Fossil Dyna is a card that people are summoning during the Duelist Cup. Push it into the back row if you can get access to this. Begin. Maxi early to play around that inherent special summon Diablo Star, playing around the first special summon draw. Finger the Roach. Now, Drew Swarm and Serenir are actual good disruptions against Snake Eyes. You wait for the Mascarina to go into the graveyard, they activate the Flame Burge Dragon to equip it, then you banish it, and you're in a pretty good spot.
right, all right. Now, what can we cook with a single Earthbound Prisoner? We are going to be banishing a Link Karibo, which we could not have activated. We're going to be triggering the Branded Regain to draw an additional card, adding to our hand, maybe drawing into another Earthbound. That would be great. We have Prisoner, the Groundkeeper, which is the best one to summon. Groundkeeper on summon, summon from the deck. We fingered Max C instead of cross out designating Max C, thus we can't Max C. Did we have Max C in our opening hand? So we fingered Max C when we have Max C. We could have said that that's potentially a big mistake. You do want to think about that with your call by the grave. Should you finger the Max C or should you cross out designate or should you ash it? Well, if you have your own Max C, save the finger for something else generally. Grab the prison. Prison will allow an additional summon with the Line Walker. The field spell has the effect of negating a monster in the field, so now the Flame Burge on field effect is negated. Drew Swarm is going to send the Flame Burge to the graveyard. We have Promethean Princess being triggered to destroy the Shen Shen and the Ambla Whale to come forth and summon. Very nice. And goodbye to the Flame Burrs. We have Regain being triggered because you summoned to reborn our Druid Swarm. We now have the Flame Burrs activating to reborn two level one fires. Oak could summon a banished or engraved fire back in the field. You have Ash activating to grab another Ash. We could have grabbed a Poplar to then summon another body onto the field if we wanted to. Now Poplar triggering, equipping our Flame Burrs into the back row. We still don't have good use for our cross out designate. Do we get the Promethean Princess in the graveyard? We cannot. Cross out versus cross out with two totally different decks. How is this going to work out? Promethean Princess activate to non-target reborn our Flame Burrs from the graveyard. Push a card in the field into the back row. Get rid of that Druid Swarm so it does not send our monster to the grave as we then make a Nightmare Phoenix. On summon, discard a card. Also triggering the Flame Burrs to reborn two cards in the graveyard. Take out that cross out designate as we use it to thin out our deck, negating Maxi. We don't want to draw another Maxi, so just negate it for the turn. That's it. Thin the deck, shuffle our deck. That's fine. Now, Reborn, Reborn. Oak will be activating. They are also boosted up by the field spell. That's a plus additional 1100. Putting them at 1900, 2K. That is a totally unneeded effect for Snake Eyes, I believe so. We have not used up our normal summon yet as we search for a Jet Synchron to then normal summon it. We then use the original Sinful in the Graver to search our deck for a Curry Kara, ready to tribute any monster in the field that has activated its effect this turn. Unicorn on summon, discard a card, spin a card in the field, back in the deck. Now, the Keeper states that your monsters could not be destroyed by battle or card effect if there's a field card zone. Card. So we just tried to pop it once with the Access Code Talker. It didn't work. We'll try again. We popped the field spell this time. Field spell activates when destroyed. It says if this card is destroyed, half your opponent's life points and then negate the effects of all face up cards your opponent currently controls until the end of this turn. I think we had game by just attacking into the ground keeper because it can't be destroyed with battle. You just attack, attack, attack. Full field negate and we lose half of our life points, mate. We're also triggering the regain to draw a card. Didn't draw no hand trap, unfortunately. So Axis Code Tucker is not going to be popping any more cards. Even if it banishes itself, it does not pop. As we then make Zelantis, no one's got time to read the Earthbound cards, okay? Let's be real. We're still going to win even without having to read them. Zelantis banishing everything to then re-summon everything. Summon, 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 summon into face down defense or face up, however we want to summon it. Triggering the Promethean Princess to pop the opposing card to come forth and summon. Co-linking with the Zelantis, so within the battle phase, we could pop multiple cards in the field, taking out the Regained and the Earthbound. Now, unfortunately, we do not have lethal damage, but the Earthbound player is so severely crippled, I don't think they're really going to be able to draw into anything that could help them. And they are going to have to play against Maxi this time. Yup, Maxi no longer fingered. We're going to be drawing per special summon. Now, when we think about it, there's actually no disruption from Snake Eyes. So, can we fully cook off of a one-for-one? One? I hope so. Summoning the best level one to then summon any Earthbound from the deck. This will trigger, activate the Flame Burst to summon itself onto the field. Now, our disruption kind of a Z-Lantis in the battle phase, but we could deal with it outside of the battle phase. We are summoning an Earthbound Stone Sweeper to then Synchro into a Geo Gremlin. 
Geo Gremlin surely does something good on summon, right? Whoa, okay, uh, on summon target a monster, your opponent then chooses to destroy it or gain life. We chose to destroy our own Zelantis. Wait, your, your opponent chooses one of these effects. Gain life equals, oh, okay, so you would gain life or, oh, they didn't want you to gain life. Wow. Geo Gremlin is activating the battle phase to fuse with the grave. Huh? During the battle phase, fusion summon an earthbound fusion from your action deck using your hand field or grave. Interesting. Can't Nibiru in the battle phase. On summon searching for a br prison field spell. Okay. I think this fusion has disruption. We're going to read it at the end of the turn. Activating the prison, making it so the flame burge is negated as long as we have the field spell. This states that if your opponent summons from the extra deck, you could destroy as many monsters your opponent controls as possible that were special summoned this turn, then burn 800 for each monster destroyed. Maybe that will be good. Let's find out. I think that's our only disruption. Ash on summon, grabbing the poplar. Poplar activates summon itself onto the field. We're not activating again as we further link this up into a nightmare unicorn. We could then chain, destroy the nightmare unicorn with the effect of our Geo Kraken. Are we doing so? We are not, because it's not even being threatened for being spun back. So we're gonna wait for another extra deck summon. Oak on summon, summon the Jet Synchron. We're making an Underworld Goddess. Now this will activate to negate, but then we're gonna chain in response to it, attempting to destroy the Goddess, but the Goddess is unaffected unless she's targeted. So with the activation to destroy, are we targeting? No. Non-target destroy, unaffected from the non-target. You are thus negated. Damn. Uh, we perfectly played around the effect of the Earthbound Destroyer. Black Witch, discard, come forth and summon. Equip into the back or are wanted. We're gonna discard our Maxi to reborn our Jet Synchron. I think going into a Boar Load. Boar Load Omni Negate is here. Thus now giving us lethal damage if we were to just go into the battle phase, which is exactly what we do. Snake Eyes using everything in its arsenal to barely beat Earthbound. Ogre grabbing the Punk Semen, holding onto Ash and Imperm. When do we Ash? When do we Imperm? We're gonna Imperm negate the Punk Semen. Now, using Ash could play into Triple Tactics Thrust or Triple Tactics Talent. So even if Imperm was the worst card to use there, the worser card, the uh, lesser of two, because the Imperm is usable on your turn is much more versatile, but the Ash could also negate a Max C, so, you know, it's kind of up in the air. For TCG, I'd say Imperm is definitely better, but for Mass Adult, it's kind of equal. We didn't play in the Triple Tactics Talent, so perfect, very well done. Wanted Seeker into the Max C. We held on to the Ash to negate that Max C. So what's interesting is if you open up a groundkeeper and a punk semen, you'd rather summon the punk? Huh? It's, the card's not that good. I mean, it's summon any monster from the deck that's an earthbound. You'd think that that would be the main core play to pop off with, but punk semen is just better. That does not make me like earthbound more. That is quite concerning to me. We have Link Rebo being sent to the graveyard to come forth and summon our Diablo Star. When the Link Rebo is going to the grave, that tells me they are setting up for a Borload Savage Dragon play. We are summoning an Ash. Ash is activating Grab the Poplar, but then we are not doing the Borload Savage Dragon play. We're actually doing the Ash play since we already used up our normal summon. We can't search for Jet Sync on the normal summon it. You're then going to summon a Flame Burst from the deck, triggering the Flame Burst sent from the field to the grave to Reborn from the graveyard, Ash and Poplar. We now have Wanted Seeker going for that draw one play. The card was just limited to one in OCG, by the way. We now have Nightmare Phoenix on summon, discard a card, pop a back row. If you kept Link Rebo on the field, it would have co-linked with the Link Rebo to draw a card in addition to pop in. And let's get swinging. <laughs> Very simple, lethal damage. Damn. Damn. That's that's how it be. That's how it be. Uh, Earthbound, got Earthbounded. That is a common occurrence with decks that are rogue is that their normal summon is so important, but to make the deck more consistent, they have to add so many cards that normal summon. And then when you draw all those cards that require your one normal summon and it gets disrupted, your whole deck folds. That's it. It's done. 
where you have a good deck like Snake Eyes where they're not so reliant on that normal summon and they can play a ton of hand traps if their normal summon gets disrupted and they have proper extensions like Diablo Star and the Wanted where, you know, you disrupt that normal summon. We got hand traps or extension and we're good. Where we saw the opposite for Earthbound, unfortunately. Let's now hop into another match. Activating our Rainbow Bridge, then following up with the Crystal Bond, grabbing a Pegasus, setting up into the back row a Rainbow Dragon, activating the on-field effect to summon a Ruby from the deck. We're then using the Rainbow Bridge to pop our Crystal Beast to search for our Crystal Beast card. We're then revealing a Rainbow Dragon with the Awakening of Crystal Ultimates to then send a Salvation to banish it and search for a field spell, plus a Crystal Beast, searching for our oh cash tira fenrir searcher field spell nice crystal beast the best way to get fenrir in your hand and then end the turn <laughs> okay so our main disruption being the fenrir we activate a monster effect we then get banished something face up now you're never really happy to have a lovely labyrinth in your hand we're gonna ariana send a back or a special summon the ariana so Ariane into Ariana. We're going to be banishing the Ariana on the activation of searching for a Labyrinth card here. That Labyrinth card being our big welcome Labyrinth. Very well done. What are our disruptors? We have Daruma, which could flip the whole field face down. We have Big Welcome, which could summon the lovely, then pop a card in the field. We have Dogmatic Punishment, which could pop two cards on the field. Let's go. Rainbow Bridge is popping to search for an Awakening. We are then using the effect of our Rainbow Bridge to target a card the opponent controls and return it back to the hand. Forcing us to activate the big welcome, we're gonna summon the Lady instead of the Lovely to pop a card in the field. Ariane will be triggered to then draw a card and then summon the Lovely onto the field. Very nicely done. Welcome Labyrinth is also being triggered to set itself onto the field, but will not be activatable this turn. We do have Super Poly to fuse with their field if we want to. The Lady is untargetable and indestructible, but is affected by the Super Poly. We chose to not summon the Lovely with Ariane. From your hand, either special summon a Fiend or set one spell in a trap. We chose to not do it. Fusion Shokan into Garura. Okay. Get ready to battle. Uh, before battling, we're going to half our battle damage by uh, searching for a card first. Sure. So the effect of Garura is it does battle double battle damage, and now it's going to do regular battle damage. Ruby on summon. Summon as many cards from our back row as possible. I mean, we, had, we had lethal if it wasn't for Pot of P. We need 16,000 damage for a game. Lightning Chidori. Harpies used to use this. Popping a back row card, playing right into Nibiru, tributing the entire field. Now... We're not popping the card, we are returning it to the top of the deck, I believe. Right? Target the card. Uh, I hate when the dual log sometimes inconsistently shows some activate effects, not others. We are now flipping up the Conclave. Conclave has a very special effect of being able to send this face of card to the graveyard to then spin one card on the field back into the hand. We have Ariana on summon, searching for the Labyrinth Labyrinth, which could summon a monster from our hand or grave. Now, we are going to be using it with the Welcome Labyrinth to pop a card on the field. Very nice. But we have the Conclave, which is going to spin the Labyrinth field cell back to the hand, so it does not give us the non-targeting destruction of the Welcome Labyrinth. No pop, but we got Lady on the field now. Big Welcome is being activated to spin the token off of the field giving us 7,600 damage plus super poly for game? No. Okay. Replaying our Labyrinth Labyrinth to so then make a Muckraker. Muckraker can target a card in the graveyard, discard a card to then reborn that card. We have Ariane to now pass our turn. We just have a Dogmatica Punishment as our only disruption. Kind of interesting here. Okay. We are setting up with the Awakening of Crystal Ultimates, revealing the Rainbow Dragon to summon a Ruby, activating the Reborn from our graveyard, I should say our back row, onto the field. At the start of the battle phase, we're going to pop the Ruby with the Elder Entity Entis, which will activate the effect to pop another card on the field. Welcome Labyrinth is triggering, Elder Entity Entis is triggering, the Labyrinth is activating to summon a monster from the hand or grave. Now, what is the Rainbow Bridge doing? The Crystal Beast was placed into your back or you could target a card your opponent controls to return it back to the hand. But because we're the non-turn player, 
you target, if you were to target the field spell, the field spell will still resolve because we'll be on the higher chain link. We are targeting the Muckraker instead, though. You have Ariane and Ariana both triggering to draw two cards here. Draw. Draw. <laughs> Double draw into the scoop. We are scooping the pot of greed. No, thank you. Labyrinth, Labyrinth plus the Welcome Labyrinth. So here you know that with a Labyrinth back row that this field spell will turn into non-targeting destruction. Max C in the draw phase here. We have Pot of P digging three cards deep. Is Pot of P worth it to play in any deck if you're only willing to banish three cards? I think it probably still is. Foolish Barrel Goods limited to one, sending the Rainbow Bridge, which is a huge card. This will be searching for a Crystal Beast monster plus any field. So we have Necro Valley, which I think could shut down Labyrinth quite well. A lot of their card effects revolve around recycling cards in the graveyard, reborning or banishing, which Necro Valley is going to completely stop. Now we have to worry about Nibiru. We're on summon number two. The Awakening Crystal Ultimates, adding a Rainbow Dragon. I should say adding, yeah, adding the Rainbow Bridge. Activate that Rainbow Bridge into the Welcome Labyrinth and non-target destroy. So we're going to non-target destroy that Rainbow Bridge continuous spell, summoning our Ariana. Uh, we're still on summon two. Ariana on summon, searching her deck for the clock. Okay. Necro Valley. So now we can't move cards in the graveyard. Can't banish, can't add. We are going to be flipping up the Conclave, which could spin a card in the field back to the hand. Pot of E. Drawn two random cards here. Clock is being discarded. We're then chaining our chandelier, discarding the rollback. Now, we can't use rollback to copy a card in the graveyard because of Necro Valley. We can't use chandelier to add itself in the graveyard back to the hand because of Necro Valley. We can't use Kook Clock to summon itself on the field or add back to the hand because of Necro Valley. We can't recycle the Welcome Labyrinth in the graveyard back in the field because of Necro Valley. Necro Valley beats Labyrinth. Okay, setting up the big welcome, but we have a welcome trap plus field spell, which will pop the Necro Valley. That's the problem. Big welcome, but we know that. Because we know that, we're gonna spin the field spell back on the activation of the big welcome so that it does not destroy our Necro Valley. Very well done. Spin back, summon the lovely, but then the lovely is a second way to pop the Necro Valley. We do have impermanence. Activate lovely to pop the Necro Valley. Imperm negate not only the lovely, but we're going to be negating the transaction rollback. All right, very nice. Ariana searching for a big welcome, which we could use to trigger the lovely during the opponent's draw phase if we wanted to. Now. The Necro Valley, don't get confused with how this works. It doesn't stop a card from activating in the graveyard. So if we send an Elder Entity Entis to the graveyard to then activate and pop, it will pop the Necro Valley. A graveyard effect will counter the Necro Valley. We have three ways to stop the Necro Valley. It's not even really stopping the deck too much because we have Lovely triggered off of the Big Welcome, Big Welcome with the Field Spell popping it, and then we have Elder Entity Entis popping the Necro Valley. Three cards to stop that Necro Valley. Okay, we have Pegasus setting up a Ruby. That will be triggering our Rainbow Dragon on the attack. We're now gonna be using Big Welcome for non-target destroy, taking out that Necro Valley. Now, because we returned a monster back to the hand, that will trigger the Lovely to non-target pop a card on the field or in the hand. And you don't know until the resolution of the effect of Lovely. And all the effects that Necro Valley was now stopping is activating, add to the hand, play onto the field and Chandelier could trigger the clock in the graveyard to also get back onto the field. Non-target poppin', Dogmatica Punishin', chaining the Lady to the Dogmatica Punish. This is where you would want to chain a card effect to the Dogmatica Punishment, but unfortunately you can't chain a monster effect because Lovely stops you from doing that. So you wouldn't want to chain a trap to the trap because then Lady will then chain to that trap. I mean, what can I say? The deck is just really damn good. <laughs> What do you mean? Necker Valley shuts down the deck until they have 20 different ways to stop the card that shuts down their deck. 
They ha even have more ways than what we saw to stop the Necro Valley. They could even summon a Chaos Angel to banish it off the fields. What the hell? What the hell?